In my recent analysis video titled, Magnificent 7 is no longer magnificent. Roughly two months ago, I discussed the potential for market breadth to expand based on various factors. Hey everyone, I'm June, a researcher at The Expert. In this episode, let's revisit and update on the current market developments. We have noticed that smaller companies have been doing well recently. But is this because of the upcoming election or the possibility of the Fed cutting interest rates? US 500 companies with high tax rates aren't showing signs of a Trump trade yet. In the past year, these high tax companies have done worse than low tax companies by 1,237 basis points. This trend has continued since July, with high tax companies falling behind low tax companies. Trump's tax policy are a big difference from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris' stunts. If Trump's re-election and his tax cuts starts to influence the market, companies paying the most tax should start performing better. But we have not seen it yet. High effective tax rate or ETR, stocks are most concentrated in healthcare, consumer staples and energy, while low ETR stocks are largely made up of real estates and technology companies. The performance of US small cap stocks may hinge more on the Federal Reserve decisions and earnings trend than on the upcoming election, despite rising chances of Trump's re-election as evidenced by Predict It data showing his win probability crossing 50% in May. US 2000 stocks have underperformed the US 500 all year. The shift only began in early July, driven by rising expectations of a Fed rate cut in September. When the likelihood of this cut diminished, US 2000 stocks lost some of their substantial gains. Additionally, the anticipated increase in revenues for US 2000 stocks this quarter, the first since late 2022, may also be fueling their recent performance. Non-mega cap stocks within the US 500 are showing promising signs, with the 493 stocks outside the Magnificent 7 projected to see a 5% earning growth in Q2, the first in over six quarters possibly reaching double digits by Q4. The Magnificent 7, which has a staggering 56.8% gain in Q4 2023, might see their growth slow to 18.3% by Q4 2024. If the Fed reduces interest rates in September, it could further boost these stocks and small caps in the later half of the year. Notably, on July 11, small caps had their third largest gain relative to large caps since 2000. Reminiscent of recovery rallies in October 2011 and March 2020. This is part of a broader market rally with 9 of the top 10 stocks in Bloomberg's multi-team universe jumping over 40% this year, outperforming the Magnificent 7. On the Nasdaq 100 front, semiconductor stocks, which lack returns for most of the year, have recently faced challenges. Their earnings growth is peaking, coupled with concerns over new Biden administration regulations and potential Fed rate cuts that might benefit other sectors. Although semiconductors experienced an 84% year-over-year net income growth in quarter one, this is expected to slow to 49.4% this quarter, likely stalling their performance. The recent decline in semiconductor stocks appear to be driven more by current White House policies and Fed actions than by the election. Highlighted by the sector's dip when the Biden administration considered stricter chip export rules to China on July 17. Market leaders are shifting from those that thrive when the Fed helps steady to interest rate sensitive stocks as potential rate cut looms. Semiconductors, which had surged 88.8% .8 above the broader market during the Fed pause, have seen a 9.3% drop since July 10th. In contrast, home builders, which rose just 37.5% during the same period, have posted a 17.9% gain since the 10th, outperforming the US 500. Other interest rate sensitive segments like banks, insurance and transportation have also outperformed the index. Year-to-date leaders are losing their top spot amid potential Fed policy change following easing CPI data, hinting at continued gains. Small caps previously struggling with the 2021 spec bubble, bursts and a lack of IPOs are near 20-year lows compared to large cap. However, with high rates potentially set to ease, especially next year, a recovery in this segment could be imminent. Monetary policy divergence, inflation trends and AI exposures are poised to disrupt global equity markets and reshape assets allocation for the second half of the year. The US 2000 index, having broken out of a two-year trading range, is benefiting from lower-than-expected CPI numbers and other positive data, which have provided the Fed with room to contemplate rate cuts. This has bolstered market sentiment, broadening market breadth and placing the US 2000 on much stronger technical footing. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found today's video insightful. 
Everything I've shared comes from a mix of research and my own perspective. Remember, when it comes to trading or investing, always do your own homework and stay aware of the risk. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please subscribe, share, and hit the like button. You can quickly access all our channels by scanning the QR code. Take care, and I'll see you in the next episode.